Morning, JCS! So far, we have been going through the series on the different names of God. So today, I will be sharing another name of God, and we will be exploring how God revealed Himself in the New Testament. Okay, so before we start, I'd like to start off with a little game just as an icebreaker. I want you to do it with your homeroom teachers. It's related to our sermon topic for today. So I'm going to be showing you a couple of pictures of different characters from movies. And you guys have to guess who their fathers are. Okay, can you do it? You're going to be given 10 seconds for each slide. Many of you might be familiar with all these characters from the movies mentioned above. So this father character show how they love and care for their child in their own special way. Well, our real life fathers may be similar or kind of different from them. And some of us may have actually great relationship with our fathers and some of us may have probably not. Okay? And this relationship likely affects how we view God as our father. So is he like our fathers here on earth or is he different? Today, we'll try to learn how the Bible teaches us on who God through a story. So what kind of father is our God? What does it mean to have God as our father? What does it mean to be his child? Let's try to think about these questions during the sermon, okay? So in the Bible, Jesus shares the story of a young man who thinks that his life would be so much better if he could leave home. So it is also a story of a loving and caring father who never gave up on his son despite his rebellious actions. Okay, so the title of the story is The Son Who Left Home. Some of you guys may be familiar, okay? So I'm gonna start. Jesus said, a man had two sons. The younger son one day came to his father and said, father, give me my share of my property. So the father divided the property between the two sons into half then the younger son gathered up all that he had and left home. So he traveled far away to another country. There he wasted his money and foolish living. He spent everything that he had. Soon after that, the land became very dry and there was no rain. There was famine. There was not enough food to eat anywhere in the country. The son was so hungry and he needed money. So he got a job with one of the citizens there and the man sent the son into the fields to feed pigs. The son was so hungry. He was willing to eat even the food of the pigs that, he was, that was right in front of him. But no one gave him anything. The son realized that he had been very foolish. So he thought, all of my fathers have plenty of food, but now I'm here, almost dying with hunger. I will leave and return to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I'm not good enough to be called your son but let me be like one of your servants. So the son left and went to his father. While the son was still a long way, his father saw him coming. He felt sorry for his son. So the father ran to him and hugged him and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. 
I'm not good enough to be called your son. But guess what? The father said to his servants, Hurry, bring the best clothes and put them on him. Also put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get our fat calf and kill, kill it. Then we can have a feast and celebrate. My son was dead, but now he's alive again. He was lost, but now he's found. So they began to celebrate. They had a huge party. So the older son, he was in the field. And as he came closer to the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked, Hey, what does this all mean? The servant said, Your brother has come back. And you know what? Your father killed the fat calf to eat because your father came home safely. Well, the, son, old, uh, the older son was angry and he was furious and he would not go into the feast. So his father went out and begged him to come in. The son said to his father, Father, I have served you like a slave for so many years. I have always obeyed your commands, but you never even killed a young goat for me to have a feast with my friends. But your other son has wasted all your money. Then he comes home and you kill the fat calf for him. But the father said to him, Son, you are always with me. All that I have is yours. We had to celebrate and be happy because your brother was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. So guys, in the story, we see how this rebellious son left home and used up all his money that his father had given him. And yet his father still accepted him and forgave him when he came back. He was waiting for his son and had not given up on him. He was merciful and compassionate. The second son, of course, was jealous, not knowing that he already had everything. His father was with him and everything in his father's house was his. So actually, this story is a great picture of what kind of father is God to us. It actually depicts how God demonstrated his love for us. How did he show his love? He showed his love by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to pay for our sins so we could be his children. We have become his child and God loves us because we are his children regardless of our flaws and mistakes. So this verse here right, shows us how God displayed his love through Jesus Christ. So let's try to read it together. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. In this way, God shows his great love for us. Romans 5, 8. So all of us might have instances of hurting other people or saying bad words to our siblings, our classmates, and people around us. And this breaks God's heart. But it doesn't make God love us any less. When we say sorry and ask for His forgiveness, He's always ready to accept us and lead us to do the right thing. So what does it mean to have God as our Father? In other words, what does it mean to live as God's child? Jesus showed us through His life. He prayed. He looked after other people's needs and interests before His, and He shared about who God is and what God wants. We may follow the footsteps of Jesus if we want to live as God's child, okay? So God wants the best for us. He wants us to communicate with Him and tell Him our needs and wants. He wants us. He's deeply interested in us. So Jesus asks us to actively ask and communicate with God. He says, Hey, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So, guys, God is not just any father. He is a good father. He knows who we are deeply more than our earthly fathers. Our fathers here on earth are actually flawed. They make mistakes sometimes, just like us. But however, our Father in heaven is perfect. He makes no mistakes and He knows what we exactly need. So He's given us His only Son, Jesus Christ, yet He's willing to give even more. So we have become His children and He has become our Father. Okay? This happens when we put our trust in Jesus. So this is the kind of relationship God wants us to have with Him. I hope we would not take this grant, uh, opportunity or privilege for granted. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to pay for our sins. Thank you for being our father and for calling us your children. Thank you for allowing us to call you our father. Thank you, God, because you're a good father to us, Lord. 
Help us to live as children of light, the life that you have called us to live out. Help us to become more like Jesus each day, God. All of this in, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.